This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay, we're back. We're live. We're really live, I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Mina, Marita, and I were at the uh, Clean Energy Day Conference 2017 over in uh, Laniakea. Just walked mm -hmm. back to, uh, scamper back to the studio and uh, get together with Marco. Uh, welcome, Mina. Thanks for doing this. Thanks, Jay. That was a quick walk. <laughs> it was. <laughs> You're a good walker. And uh, Marco, thank you for joining us. A little late today, but uh, we're determined to do this show. Well, ni hao from uh, beautiful Hilo, my friends, and uh, great to be back with you on this uh, Aloha Monday. Absolutely. Great. Well, let's first uh, talk about the uh, Clean Energy Day conference going on in Lania Kea. They're having lunch now, but we can talk about what happened in the morning. What happened in the morning, Mina? Well, I think, you know, it started off with a um, kind of an update from all the different state, county um, agencies that work on uh, transportation issues so it was a nice recap of what what they're doing and what's going on and how they measure their progress yeah I had the sense from them that there really is something going on it's not you know for a long time it was talk but yeah. it's not so much talk they're actually got programs lots of programs and mm -hmm. they're putting lots of time and they're hiring people to do it and and it's getting done I mean there's actually a change happening under our feet yeah and I think one of the most exciting things is the um, change of mindset yeah. that transportation is no longer just focusing on cars but multimodal situations um, you know safe complete streets um, so people can walk bike or or even take um, mass transportation more conveniently as well as has having the options of of a vehicle so uh, you know the, that whole movement into uh, more of a um, multimodal solutions and more choices for for um, Hawaii's residents. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Some, something is happening. It's a good thing, and we have a sort of a new normal. Everybody takes the the basic idea of complete streets and bikes and yeah. multimodal. Take it for granted. That's already pretty much accepted around the community, and that is that's a change. We we are yeah. moving forward. Who was your favorite speaker, if you can think of one? Oh, I'm, I'm biased to Kauai. Okay. So of I thought Lee Steinitz <laughs> um, with the updates on Kauai. And it is exciting when you see the transformation on the streets, um, the bikeway, the sidewalks, the, the access to public transportation, and the beautification of streets. Um, so, so that's really exciting on Kauai. Yeah. <laughs> and the governor spoke. Uh, any thoughts about that? Um, I, he needs to give a more complete vision of Hawaii's clean energy future. That's my suggestion to him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then we had awards. Uh, do you have any favorite awards that were given out that you want to think about? Right here. Oh, these <laughs> awards, then. <laughs> yeah, uh, Think Tech got an award for um, the media section. And, and yeah, thanks to you, you know. Well, it's all because you, you show up on these shows, <laughs> Mina. You too, Marco. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, so we got an award. I want to read it to you. It's here on the table. I'm going to show it to you first. There it is. We got an award just now. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, well, let me show it to camera Vivian. There, there you go. Okay, I'm putting it on the table. And, and well-deserved because, you know, there's a lot of education um, involved of the general public, and this is one medium that has been consistent in getting information about energy issues and discussion on energy issues. So thank you, Jay. Thank oh, you, thank Think you, <laughs> Thank you, Marco. Thank you, Hawaii Energy Policy mm -hmm. Forum. I mean, this is really a joy for us uh, to do the Clean Energy Day program, the legislative briefing program in January, to do these shows with you guys. We see each other, we see, each, we see ourselves as a, a platform, a showcase, mm -hmm. a facilitator kind of organization uh, to allow people in the energy community to come around and say hi, explain right. what they're doing, and thus to inform the public and move the needle ahead. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a role that we like, and it has some meaning in the community. Right. Yeah. So we're going to continue to do that and more. We're going to do more shows. We're going to do more on location, neighbor islands. You know, we did two mm -hmm. already. Neighbor islands, you know, you were there uh, mm -hmm. in Kauai. Um, we're going to do more when, on Maui, Big Island. We're going to get around right. in, in the coming months and years. Anyway, that was, it. that was very nice, and I certainly thank the Energy Policy Forum, and I thank our staff, and I thank our hosts and our underwriters. It's really wonderful to have the kind of support that makes this happen. Um, but let's move on. Let's move on to the agenda. What's going on? Because uh, 
you know, for example, uh, I sent in a letter supporting, uh, supporting uh, uh, Jay Griffin, and, and there's a hearing going on right now in the ledge. No, tomorrow. Tomorrow, pardon mm -hmm. me. Uh, what's that about, Marco? Can you talk about that? Well, first I wanted to congratulate you and your, your great staff there, Jay, for doing the great job you have as far as furthering the education process and uh, on energy issues. I really uh, mean that very sincerely. So, again, that's just great news that you're, you and the whole staff there are recognized for that. So, yes, yeah, so we have a special session of the Ledge uh, that has started, I believe, today, uh, ostensibly to tackle the seemingly uh, Gordian knot <laughs> of uh, of the rail project there uh, on uh, Oahu, which remains to be seen, and uh, we'll see by the end of the week as oh, far no, as whether a bill you. next to the House <laughs> and and the Senate for the rail project. But since it's uh, it's the next legislative session, I believe according to state law or statute, all interim appointments uh, essentially either have to be considered during the legislative session or the interim appointee or appointees. Uh, no longer serve in that capacity. So you have uh, Dr. Jay Griffin, uh, who has, was nominated by the, uh, the governor to be the third member of the commission after Tom Gorak left, and he will be getting a hearing before Senator Ross Baker's committee on uh, consumer protection tomorrow afternoon, if I'm not mistaken. So that will be the chance for that committee to... Uh, to hear testimony uh, and then take a vote, and then uh, assuming he were to get a majority, would be passed on uh, to uh, the the Senate uh, at large or writ large, and then the Senate would have until the end of the week to vote to up or down uh, by a minimum of 13 out of 25, and I expect that Jay is going to get a lot better than just the bare minimum to become a, uh, uh, a full commissioner, so to speak, and no longer have that interim title. Mm. Well, what, what would you say to the Senate uh, committee right now? I mean, you have your opportunity because I know they're all watching. Yeah. <laughs> well, like you, Jay, I, I'll send um, some testimony into uh, to the committee over the weekend, and I think Jay was a superb choice by Governor Ige, and uh, great to see someone who... Uh, has the type of breadth and depth and, and, and knowledge and intelligence that uh, the Jay does. And of course, Mina has worked with Jay closely over uh, an extended period of time. So I just think it was a home run in terms of the governor's choice to get somebody as talented as, uh, as Jay Griffin uh, to be uh, sharing the, uh, the commission, so to speak, with um, Chairman Randy Wasse and Lorena Kiva. Uh, Mina, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I submitted my testimony in support of Jay. Um, you know, the issue that I had, which resulted in a lawsuit that I filed, which is going to be heard by the Supreme Court in December, dealt with the process. You know, so, you know, both Tom Gorak and Jay Griffin are highly qualified, but the process that was used by the governor was flawed because I feel the law was quite clear that uh, Michael Champley stays on as a holdover commissioner until um, his successor is confirmed by the Senate, and that did not happen. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the things um, that's good with the Senate taking up um, the nomination during the special session is it will put an end to the uncertainty of um, uh, Dr. Griffin. It's you know, everybody knows it. I'll call Dr. Him Jay, Griffin. If you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it will, it will remo remove that cloud by, you know, the Senate acting on hopefully favorably on, on this confirmation. Yeah, that'd be good. Mm -hmm. So, speaking of the legislature, you know, the special session was not necessarily called for that, it was called for rail. Yeah. And we, we had some hot copy from Kalani English this morning. Did yeah. you get what he said? Yeah, he said basically disregard Senate Bill 1 and focus on Senate Bill 4 because Senate Bill's one title was flawed, uh, determined flawed by the Attorney General, so they had to, you know, insert the, the bill with, uh, insert it into a new bill with a proper title, and that's Senate Bill 4. <laughs> I, I was sort of interesting. He said the title was flawed, and that might make the bill unconstitutional. It's yes. too broad. Yeah, it was very interesting. Oh no, happened. they have to, they have to find a title that would fit the broadness of the bill. I guess. Okay, got it. Uh -huh. got, uh -huh. got it. So yeah. what does that mean in terms of result on rail? It gets funded. Yeah. 
Uh, I, yeah, and some people say at the expense of the neighbor islands. Mm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I think it's going to be really interesting because I think, you know, what you're going to see is a divide between Oahu and the neighbor islands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. ah, very. We have to follow that. Yeah. Because um, this is relevant to, you know, the biggest project the state has ever had. Yeah, and I think you already see the fallout in how people voted in committees. And, of, of course, they voted on the bill today. Yeah. And um, so it'll be interesting to kind of look over the votes and see how far yeah. it went. Yeah. <laughs> Marco, you know about this? you have any thoughts on it? Yeah, I wanted to, uh, before we talk a little bit. I just wanted to ask Mina a clarifying question mm -hmm. on procedure, which is your suit, Mina, was uh, first held in uh, or first heard in, um, was it uh, circuit court or district court? And, yes, and court. you appealed that decision. And did it not have to go through the intermediate court of appeals? It just went right to the, or will go right to the Supreme Court? Okay, so it was an intermediate court of appeals and fully briefed. And we made the, a request for the Supreme Court to hear it because of the significance of um, what's to be considered. Sure, it's a big and, issue. Yeah, yeah and, and one is defining what a vacancy is, uh, the balance of power between the Senate and the administration, uh, the constitutionality of the statute which, um, you know, the PUC has a statute in place saying that the um, commissioner whose term ends remains as a holdover commissioner uh, un until his successor is confirmed by the Senate. And the administration didn't quite argue this, but um, they intimated that the statute was unconstitutional. And from what my reading is, you know, first of all, the, the PUC is a creature of the legislature, not the Constitution. Yeah. And, and so, you know, why would this statute be unconstitutional if it's not uh, an agency created by the, um, by the Constitution? So, and then the other thing is this whole process of nomination, confirmation by the Senate, and appointment. Um, you know, it's incumbent upon the governor to make timely um, uh, nominations while the legislature is in session. So because of the broadness of issues being looked at here, I think it's one of the reasons why the um, Supreme Court accepted it. Uh, you know, it's a case of first impression. So, yes. so you're mm -hmm. bypassing the the intermediate court of appeals. Right. Exactly. It was because of the gravitas, essentially, and the yeah, issues no. involved yeah. with this particular case. Yeah. Now, now right. this, this is going to um, this is going to oral argument in December. Yes. Is that what it is? Right. Oral arguments are set for December seventh at eight forty-five a.m. So right. if you want to come down and watch. And I guarantee you that ThinkTech will cover that. <laughs> okay. Or listen. I, I, sometimes they have oral arguments live, so mm. uh, they definitely tape oral, or, oral arguments. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 We so, can put that on our system. For yeah, sure. and, and, and just for general edification, um, you know, like, for example, on the Land Use Commission, you have three commissioners that are there as holdovers, you know, so... Um, and, and again, I think this is a result of the administration not sending down names in a timely yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We have to straighten this out. Yeah. Hopefully they'll be able to do that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's take a short break, you guys. When we come <laughs> back, I'd like to talk about uh, the suit against the uh, Honua uh, uh, approval. Or, or I think it's a, is it a motion for reconsideration? Motion for reconsideration. It, 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 the way Henry Curtis described it is he's, quote, lodged an appeal, lodged an appeal. I'm not sure what that means, re really, judicially speaking. Okay, we're going to talk about that when we come back, and we're going to see what the implications are. Okay. This is Think Tech. This is uh, Mina, Marco, and me at, on Monday. We'll be right back. You'll see. We all play a role in keeping our community safe. Every day, we move in and out of each other's busy lives. It's easy to take for granted all the little moments that make up our every day. Some are good, others not so much. But that's life. 
It's when something doesn't seem quite right that it's time to pay attention. Because only you know what's not supposed to be in your everyday. So protect your everyday. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. Hello, I'm Helen Dora Hyden, the host of Voice of the Veteran, seen here live every Thursday afternoon at 1 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. As a fellow veteran and veterans advocate with over 23 years experience serving veterans, active duty, and family members, I hope to educate everyone on benefits and accessibility services by inviting professionals in the field to appear on the show. In addition, I hope to plan on inviting guest veterans to talk about their concerns and possibly offer solutions. As we navigate and work together through issues, we can all benefit. Please join me every Thursday at 1 p.m. for the Voice of the Veteran. Aloha! Okay, we're definitely back. <laughs> <laughs> Planted firmly. Mina, Marco, and me. Uh, Mina, the former chair of the PUC. Uh, Marco, the uh, CEO of uh, ProVision Solar, joins us by uh, Skype from uh, um, Hilo. Um, and we talk about energy. We have six energy shows. Talked about that this morning mm -hmm. all together. We love this one because it's so intimate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you both for doing it. So anyway, uh, the, you know, the, the magic of taking these breaks is that things come up during the breaks, right? And one of the things that came up during the break just now, which we should discuss, um, is the neighbor island effect, um, you know, on this uh, rail bill that now just passed in the legislature. Uh, and, the, and the interesting, hmm, what do you call a configuration of votes mm -hmm. uh, from the delegation for the Big Island. Tell us about that, Marco. So we've got a total of 11 reps here, including four senators and seven House reps. Of those 11, all four senators, Josh Green, Kai Kahele, uh, Russell Ruderman, and Senator Lorraine Inouye, are all opposed to the current compromise. Interestingly, six of the seven House reps are in favor, so I'm not really sure what makes for the schism between the House the reps here and the Senate senators, but uh, I think if, if this bill is going to not make it to the governor's desk, I think it's most, and this is what other observers have been noting as well, that it's, it's most dicey in the Senate, uh, 25 total senators. So all they would need would be to pick off uh, 13 of them and four four already are saying no. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how the politics play out and the hearings play out and the debate plays out by the end of the week when there's final votes taken. Yeah. Well, I mean, don't count your chickens before they're hatched. <laughs> but I, I, I think the reason they're having the special session is they already have the votes. Right. Yeah. But they wouldn't have done it in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or, yeah, it would have but been. How does Kauai uh, come out on this? I, you know, um, I would think that the Senate president coming from Kauai is probably supporting his committee chair um, on it. And my understanding, it went straight to Ways and Means Committee and bypassed the Transportation Committee, which um, Senator Inouye is the chairman of. Um, so, and Kauai only has one senator. so. Um, so that's what I suspect. On the House side, I'm not sure. We have three representatives on the, on the House side. And I had a conversation with Senator, um, I'm sorry, Representative Tokioka this morning. And he's voting against the bill. Mm. And, but I don't know how um, Representative Nakamura and um, Morikawa will vote on it. So it's not over yet anyway. huh? You can have no. commitments beforehand, but they don't always stick, do they? No, you know, it's uh, until they cast the votes, you really <laughs> don't. But, you know, it's, I don't think they would have come this far yeah. without an agreement and knowing what yeah. the, somebody did the vote count yeah. already. Yeah. Well, whatever mm -hmm. happens on that, we're still pretty confident about Jay Griffin anyway. Well, I, again, you know, I, I'm not sure. You know, I, I uh, you know, with Tom Gorak, you really didn't know until well, the vote true, yeah. was and taken was on the floor. That was a big surprise there, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Everybody was surprised. Yeah, and th there's a big difference here, too, I think. You know, um, given that Tom Gorak was chief counsel at the time, um, you know, they removed um, my, uh, Commissioner Champley from the position. Yeah. I mean, 
I, again, this is me personally, he had an obligation to really uphold um, the institution and his role as a government lawyer. So it was a real sort of crossing the line in, yeah. in, um, in his particular position. Is this going to be in your book? I'm, I'm not writing a second book. <laughs> I, one was done, and that's it. <laughs> well, I'm going to predict, or be in your uh, book? ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to predict that Jay Griffin gets 25 to nothing. I'm, I believe he's going to be un <laughs> unanimity in the Senate uh, in terms of approving his, uh, his position there. What would they say, from your lips to God's ears, yeah? yeah. <laughs> well, I, you know, again, I, I think, you know, there's no doubt that this is somebody who's highly qualified. Yeah. You know, and it's just the um, nomination appointment process yeah. that's muddled right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's let's move on to the thing we promised to get to, and, and that is this uh, lawsuit by Life of the Land against Huhonua. Um, so, uh, Marco, want to take a lead on that? Too? What happened in Huhonua, and what is uh, Henry Curtis upset about? So, Huhonua has been a biomass project that's been in the works now for a number of years. Uh, replacing the old coal-fired power plant in Pepe Keo here of Hamakua Coast. And they, Helco, signed a deal with uh, Huhonua, a mainland-based company, to revivify the power plant there, not using coal, but using biomass as a eucalyptus tree that grows along the Hamakua Coast. And that PPA was approved by the commission. The deal was moving forward, but Huhonua did not, or was not able to meet a number of milestones that were required by contract, and the deal was canceled by Helco, which led to a lawsuit filed in federal court uh, that Huhonua filed against Tahiko and against Nextera and perhaps others as well. And that uh, essentially brought Hiko, Hiko Helco, and Huhonua back to the negotiating table. They worked out a, a new power purchase agreement, which reduced the power purchase agreement price. Uh, from uh, 28 plus cents a kilowatt hour under the first deal to 22 cents a kilowatt hour under the current deal. And they extended the original contract term was 20 years and the new one is 30 years. So that was approved not too long ago by the commission, all three commissioners, including Dr. Griffin. And uh, Henry Curtis and Life of the Land were a so-called participant on this particular docket, not an intervener, but a participant. And uh, Henry announced over the weekend that uh, Life of the Land, his organization, had lodged an appeal to the Hawaii Supreme Court to reverse the PUC's ruling in favor of uh, the Huhonua project going forward. In other words, he was challenging that that uh, approval. And uh, based on, uh, according to Henry, that it did not take into account uh, the greenhouse gases that were going to be emanating for decades to come if the deal moves forward and, and they start burning biomass, uh, and that, that was a, uh, a gross, uh, negligent thing to do, uh, according to Henry. So it kind of brings up interesting uh, question as to uh, what his standing will be found to be. And uh, it's been my understanding, and I certainly be, would like to hear Mina's position on this, that to overturn a commission decision in court is virtually impossible. I, I don't know of any precedents over the past decades where a lawsuit has been successful in terms of overturning a commission decision. So I, I think Henry has a very, very high bar to, to clear on that, but uh, uh, I think his, his point is an interesting one in terms of, uh, according to him, the commission not taking into account the, the effect of uh, climate change uh, uh, or the overall the overall issue of climate change and the fact that this is going to be a com but this would be a combustion a power plant where you're burning something and the burning something puts uh, crap into the air so yeah. so that's what's going on yeah, now. there will remain to be seen that. again whether the supreme court uh, allows uh, life of the land to have any standing and if they find that that henry and his group have no standing then then the the, the appeal doesn't go anywhere at least that's as i understand it as a a non-lawyer well I've, you've done it yeah. you know you've really gotten me to excited. I can see she's bursting to comment. <laughs> <laughs> Mina, what would you add to that? Well, I, I think, you know, I, as a participant, I'm not too sure about how the rules read. Um, that's something that needs to be looked at, that, you know, you would have to go through a um, motion to reconsider before. You have to exhaust all your 
your remedies before the administrative agency before you can appeal to the Supreme Court. So um, I'm, I'm, questioning, I'm questioning that, and I'm sorry, uh, it's an appeal to the Intermediate Court of Appeals. And as Marco, as you said, you know, um, it's really hard to, um, usually the, the, the ICA will not second guess the administrative agency unless there was something procedurally wrong. Right, it's a procedural thing. You yeah, can they're not going to. Procedural, but not on substance. They usually don't um, deal on substance. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, you know, then there's the question on, you know, how responsible is the PUC for, for policy issues like greenhouse gas emissions and, and, and in particular on, you know, one source, um, you know, where there might be an increase in greenhouse gases from this particular PPA. I mean, you know, there's tons of other PPAs um, that are non-emitting that have been approved by the PUC. So is that a balance? Um, what do you think? I mean, should the PUC get involved in this policy and make a policy say we're not going to take anything that's, that's, that's fossil? Well, I think it should be part of its decision in moving forward and, and especially uh, meeting renewable portfolio standard goals. But it's not, it's not the sole issue to be looking at as, as they move forward. That's true. It makes it complex yeah. that you have to look at all the issues. Yeah. And I think, you know, there's a greater case on economic issues on whether this uh, PPA is a good deal for the ratepayer because from the original PPA that was approved when I was chair, the, the risk was on the developer at that time. This PPA, all the risk is on the ratepayer. And the ratepayer will pay. Yeah, and while you know there may be uh, a reduction in the kilowatt, kilowatt hour price, I mean, one of the things that stood out to me is the capacity charges. You know, the capacity charges went from around 4000 in the old PPA to some over $50,000 a, a capacity month. capacity charge? What, what the, um, what the um, utility pays to, 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 to have it, have to it have operating. Available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. We're almost out of time, Can I ask you guys. A, uh, but ask why don't you, you close on the point, can, Marco? Uh, do you know whether a so-called participant on a docket as Life of the Land was on Huohonua, whether a participant can uh, file something to ask the commission to reconsider their decision, if that's a preliminary step? I mean, can they do that? I would, I would think that would be um, the preliminary, preliminary step whether you're a participant or an intervener but I again I you know I'm not up on the rules on that and I think that would have to happen you exhaust all your uh, remedies within the agency mm. before you can go to the ICA mm. yeah mm -hmm. so we're gonna have to see how this plays out we're gonna verify what's going on and who's got yeah. it and you know uh, how it got there Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we'll do that next time. And next time we'll also do a discussion of the uh, inclinations paper and see how that's folding, uh, unfolding too, uh, given all the things that are happening by Hawaiian Electric and uh, in all these various initiatives. Mm -hmm. There seems to be more happening now, don't you think? Um, there was always a lot happening. Yeah. But now it's just, you know, I, again, how do you pull all the different pieces together? Yeah, well, we and, try. Yeah. <laughs> Marco, why don't you say goodbye to everybody? Goodbye to everybody. <laughs> I want more. <laughs> <laughs> Have a holly jolly rest of your Monday, dear Mina and Jay. <laughs> Thank you, Marco. Thank you, Marco. Thank, Thank you, Mina. <laughs> Thank you both. We'll see you again in two weeks or sooner. Yeah. Aloha. <laughs>